you're reading the news, then you probably heard about the Spectre attack. Spectre is a security vulnerability discovered by Jan Horn from Google's Project Zero. Under the right conditions, Spectre allows attackers to access your private information at the CPU level, such as your passwords, credit card numbers, and other sensitive information. The concept of Spectre can be complicated, so I made this video to explain it in a very simplified way using a few assumptions. Here's the code that an attacker may run. First off, the attacker starts by defining a variable that contains an arbitrary set of information. Then the attacker defines a variable input that's supposed to hold a value between 1 and 4, but instead holds a much bigger number in this scenario. Then they define an if condition that checks if input is less than data.size. While executing this line of code, the CPU doesn't have the value of data.size, so it needs to ask the memory for it. This process takes a bit of time, so in order to speed up performance, modern CPUs will do speculative execution. Under some circumstances, the CPU will assume that this condition will be true at the moment and then speculatively executes data of input. This leads to access private data. That's because if you take a look at the simplified memory diagram, you see that it's typically a long array that contains your data, alongside other data that you should not have access to. But because of this speculative execution, the attacker was able to read a secret byte or character that normally they won't be able to read. Now, after the value of data.size has been returned from the memory to the CPU, the CPU realizes this input of 1000 is bigger than data.size and that the speculative execution was wrong, so it undoes the execution of that line. That's how CPUs are supposed to work. But what the researcher has discovered is that even though the speculative execution has been undoed, the value of secret is still available in the CPU cache. A CPU cache is a tiny storage in the CPU that allows it to read data from its cache much faster than having to go to the memory every time. So the only job left for the attacker is to guess the value of secret. And they will use a time-based attack in order to guess that value. Here's how it works. The attacker will create a characters variable containing a set of all possible characters. To keep it short, let's say it's from A to Z. And now the attacker will read the value of cars of zero, which will actually put its value in the CPU cache so that it can read it faster later on. Now using this information, the attacker will read the value of cars of secret and then use a high precision timer to time that operation. Let's say it takes 60 milliseconds, which is obviously over exaggerated. The attacker can immediately conclude that cars of secret was not in the CPU cache. It took some time because the CPU had to go to the memory. And then the attacker continues on doing this for all the other values, 1, 2, 3, etc. And then in this scenario, when they reach number 15, here's what happens. They read the value of cars 15, which the CPU loads and stores in its cache. But cars of secret takes 5 milliseconds instead of 60. This means that cars of secret was read from the CPU cache and not from the memory, which means that the value of secret is 15. And if 0 is A, 1 is B, then 15 is P which means secret equals p. That's how the attacker was able to guess the value of one secret byte at position 1000. Then they will repeat this for the next value of input 1001 and so on and so forth. So to recap, the attacker runs the code with a misleading input. This tricks the CPU into reading a secret character that will be stored in the CPU cache. And finally, the attacker uses a timing attack to guess that value. And that's how Spectre allows the attacker in some conditions to read private data, for example, from one tab in your browser to another. This private data could be anything from passwords, credit card information, cookies, and other sensitive information. I hope you found this explanation helpful. Make sure to subscribe to watch my other videos and the simplified explanation for Meltdown, which will be coming soon. And if you have any questions, write a comment and I'll answer it.